Hello, both my minds. Today I have a highly anthropic concern. You know how in movies and TV shows there's always a super villain who wants to destroy the universe? Or there's always a weapon or superpower that can destroy the fabric of space time? Or the good guys can just reboot the universe? Well, that's just silly, of course. I mean, in real life, that could never happen. On purpose. Because turns out that the universe is really fragile. As far as we know, there are two ways that everything in the universe could be destroyed. Every planet, every star, every galaxy, every black hole, every atom, and of course, every creature made of atoms. The universe would technically still exist, but it would be a far different place. These two real-life Ragnaroks are a change in the value of the Higgs field, also known as vacuum decay, and the matter could become strange which is the one I'm explaining today, because even though both of these events could happen randomly at any moment and destroy everything, we probably will never be able to trigger vacuum decay on purpose, not even by accident. But on the other hand, we might already have the technology to trigger the stranginization of matter. And to understand why, we first have to understand that both of these events rely in the same diagnosis of our universe. It is metastable. In physics, they explain metastability this way. If it's very hard not to fall, that's unstable. If it's impossible to fall, that's stable. And if you could fall, that's metastable. I prefer to see it as being in a relationship. Being metastable means that both of you are happy together, but that there are way better options out there for both of you. Feel free to use them when trying to break up with someone, but the problem here is that we are in a relationship with our universe and it could dump us at any moment. Vacuum decay is the most well-known metastable symptom of our universe, and the people over at In A Nutshell have already a great video explaining it. Now, about the stranginization of matter, you probably already know that everything is made of atoms. And if you didn't know, surprise! You are made of atoms! Atoms, in turn, are made of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Electrons are fundamental, they aren't made of anything else while protons and neutrons are made of quarks, and quarks are fundamental too. There are six kinds of quarks, up, down, strain, charm, top, bottom, or beauty, depending on who you ask. Physics Girl has a great video about quarks, but all that we have to know here is that quarks are clingy, they are never alone, they are always forming particles with other quarks. For example, a proton is made of two ups and one down, while a neutron is made of two downs and one up. Of course, there are many other combinations, but all of them are unstable. They are terrible relationships. They last less than an instant and then they disintegrate. They spend some time on their own, thinking things over, they concentrate on their careers, and eventually they find stable relationships. And here is why that could kill us all. Two scientists discovered that a bunch of up, down, and strange quarks could be stable. More stable, in fact, than protons or neutrons. This means that protons and neutrons can become strangelets, but strangelets can become protons nor neutrons. Kind of like how water only flows naturally downstream, never upstream. For us, creatures made of protons and neutrons, this is like one day finding out that the floor of your house is on top of a bottomless pit. Yeah, you are safe right now, but if you fall, you are not going to survive. Even worse, it would be a chain reaction. Once it starts, it cannot be stopped. It's like if protons and neutrons were gasoline, and strange matter is a match that could set it off. This is how it could go down. Imagine that there is a negatively charged strangelet coming towards Earth, created either by an idealistic supervillain, or as two random particles crash in space at very high speeds. Either way, the strangelet finds itself in the atmosphere, surrounded by atoms, and being negatively charged, it is attracted to a nucleus of an atom, and here you have to understand that strangelets are like water. So what happens when two water drops touch? That's right, they merge. Suddenly, the protons and neutrons can have way less energy being part of the strangelet. The metaphorical walls of their metastable states have been broken, so they fall. They release all of their extra energy and are absorbed by the strangelet. As the strangelet absorbs protons and neutrons, it eventually reaches its size limit at which point it becomes two or more strangelets, and each strangelet repeats the process. 
destroying all the atoms in their way, until everything on Earth would be strange matter. We would die, of course. I mean, everything on Earth would. But we would die born by the radiation long before our corpses became strange matter. But that would not be the end of it. All this radiation would throw some strange lights away. Eventually, the Moon would follow, and then Mars and Venus, even the Sun. The strange matter would propagate through the solar system like a plague. In less than a year, everything in the solar system would be strange matter. And then Proxima Centauri, or near star, would follow. It would never end. So why hasn't this happened? Well, for one, if strange lights do exist, they are created in the vacuum of space, far from ordinary matter. And it turns out that positive strange lights are stable, while negative ones are metastable. So they have to either become a positive strange light or disintegrate. And this is great news for us, because positive strange lights, being positive, would be repelled by nuclei and wouldn't get close enough to them to convert them, instead reacting with electrons in less universe-ending ways. Thus, the semi stability that puts us in danger is what saves us. Or maybe not, because, see, all of this is a theory. We have reasons to believe that strange matter exists and that it is more stable than regular matter. But maybe it doesn't exist, or maybe it is not more stable than regular matter. Remember that they are like water? Maybe the surface tension that holds them together is too small, like with mercury. And as mercury atoms repel each other, maybe strange lights disintegrate at the first chance they get. Oddly enough, even if strange lights are not more stable, one of them could reach a neutron star, because since it's neutral, there's no repulsion, and it could convert into strange matter, creating a strange star. But we have never seen one. But could we create strange lights in the great colliders? like the LHC at CERN? Eh, probably not. Because even if strange lights are more stable than regular matter, they still require a lot of energy to be created, far more than what the LHC could conceivably produce. And yet, an amount of energy not outside our possibilities. It would be an insanely hard project. It would cost trillions and take entire human life's worth of work. But we could. And isn't any price too cheap for destroying the universe? And that's the cool thing about strange matter. If it exists, we could create it one day. But what does it mean for our species? I mean, we can already destroy all life on Earth. Imagine if we could destroy the cosmos itself. As science advances, it gives us tools. It gives us power. Even if strange matter doesn't exist, we will find something equally destructive, sooner or later. And we have to be mature enough as a species to be worthy of what we can achieve. We are not there yet, and there's a long road ahead. But I have hope that we are getting there. We have to. Thanks a lot for watching. If you want more highly entropic videos, please subscribe and give a like. And if you want another highly entropic video, may I suggest why Somaliland is the most admirable nation that you have never heard of?